Hey, welcome to Tournament Talk. We're up here in Foster. It's the uh, Foster Fishing Carnival, but it's also the site for the Round 4 of the BETS Tournament, the Berkeley Avenue Team Series. Now, one of the things about Foster, it's well known for racks. Rack, rim, go together like coffee and cigarettes. You're not supposed to say that these days, but they do. Now, the thing is, I, I can't fish racks for toffee. I really don't know what to do. So, we're going to go out because I know a bloke who does. Okay, so I said I knew a man who could fish racks. This is the boy, Berkeley Pro, Russell Barbecue. Russ is just retrieving here. So Russ, we're up in Foster here. It's bets round four. Racks everywhere. Look at them. What do you look for when you first pull up to a section of racks like this? What's the sort of thing you, you like to see that'll get your, get your juices um, flowing? Depending on the tides, um, if you've got a run-in tide, obviously you want to, here we've got a lot of shallow racks. It's only sort of, it's getting towards the bottom now and there's only, maybe eight inches of water there. So obviously all these fish are going to have to move out of here eventually, but as that tide starts pushing back in, all that ground, they want to get up on that fresh ground and feed up as much as they can on the high. As the tide starts to turn, they'll all push out of these racks here, and they'll come and sit along all these outside poles where the deeper gutters are. It all gets ploughed out by the run out tides and they'll tuck in there, and that's what you want to look for on the run out. So you'll be getting a lot of food coming off that, yeah, that run out tide and they're, they're sort of waiting sitting for the, yeah. the, the food as it comes out. What about when the, the tide gets real high when you can actually get the boat in up over the top? Is it worth fishing them yeah, then or? That's, what the, that's where the fun really starts. That's when you get in there and you can often see fish rolling or they'll have their back their tail sticking out as they got their head down mooching on the oysters and uh, a lot of the time you can just cruise along and sight fish them like we did with the boys today just throw in a surface lure and twitch it across the top or a uh, plastic, just get a plastic and I like to rig them snagless, that way you can just jig them across the top and drop it in their face and uh, yeah that's that's a ball. Alright we're in some nasty territory here Russell, you're fishing a big reel I notice, a 4,000 size reel, what's the thinking behind that? Uh, yeah like you said, um, all this area is just very unforgiving, there's no time to be in there with all your little finesse reels and that, that's why I go to the 4,000 Sauron. Uh, these are these are quite small for a 4000 but they've still got the drag, they're very compact. I think the most important part is this T-bar here. When a fish gets it, you've got to get line back real quick and if you can get a good grip on that and just wind flat out, that's probably the most important part of the whole arsenal, that bigger reel. And you're also getting, you're retrieving more line per turn that's as it. most of us are using 2000 size yeah. reels, 1500s, which you're, you're not getting too much back on that. There's no time for pumping and winding the racks. You just pull back and just constantly wind. That's all you can do. You're using a conventional braid, like a microfuse here. Yeah, that's what sort a of poundage? Pound. That's a 10, ten pound. pound. No, no light stuff for the racks. There's, there's a time and a place, and racks aren't either of those. And a leader? Um, Go on, give us a big number. Depend, depending on the water clarity. When the tide's running in, um, I always try and start as heavy as I possibly can, and then if I'm not getting the bites, work my way down. A lot of people will start light and they'll they'll lose five or six fish before they realise, okay, I'm going to go heavy now. So if you start with around a, around a 10 is usually a pretty good medium for the racks. Um, generally, you can still get the bites on the 10, but it's strong enough to be able to lock it up and scull them out. Do you find um, you, you go a little heavier early morning when you know some of the bigger fish are probably uh, cruising the racks, or do you just no, play it by air as it comes? Generally, it's more, more the wind that makes the biggest difference of all when it comes to racks. If, if you've got glassed out conditions, you'll often find they're very skittish and you might have to go back to a six pound litre. But if that wind's up and it's overcast like it is today, usually 10, sometimes even 15, you can get away with in the rack. So yeah, as heavy as you can possibly go. Heavy as the go. Okay, and the rod, obviously, meaty as well to, to cope with this territory. What are we using here? Yeah, One of the new Venoms? Um, yeah, the, the boys have really hit it on the head here with the Venom, the new Copperhead. It's a three to five kilo. It's a, it's a very ballsy rod, it's thick in the base, but it's still got that tip. You can still have that tip for throwing your light plastic so your small 3Bs around, but when the business end comes down to it, you can really scull and put some herd on those fish. What we're looking at is Okay, this. now, what I've got here is one of Russ's little plastics. Now, this is a, a gulp crawl in camo, it's one of my favourite colours, I love that. But it's rig snagless. Now, I can see the reason for this, we're going to all this dirty territory. Do you want to just talk us through how and the whys of the snagless crawl? Yeah, um, generally it's just how you say, it's snagless, it's the main reason. Um, when that tide's up over the racks, you see the brim in there and they're all chewing on the oysters. With that there, you're able to throw that over the top of the racks, 
wriggle it back and then just stop it and just let it sink down the racks and most of the time they'll just come along and they'll suck that up off the racks as you can see the hook's tucked up in there so you can go like that that's not going to snag as soon as they bite down there the hook's exposed bang you're on and it's a neat little setup you don't have a intrusive hook sticking out and uh, yeah that's how I rig most of my plastics I think it's great okay so we've thrown in uh, our craw there um, have to be a little bit more accurate when fishing a plastic in this sort of thing or are you just happy to let the current do its thing through the, the racks there as long as you've got that cross current like we have here it, the casting doesn't really matter when it's still you generally try and get as close as you can if the tides up over those racks then it doesn't matter you can cast that as deep you can cast that one or two three racks over even and just shake it back across the top until you get to this last set of racks here then drop it if you don't get anything on the top then drop it off the edge so one of the i guess one of the the, the, the useful techniques when fishing racks is the, is the rod tip height yep. keep it high when you want to keep the the lure close That's to the it. surface with that and let it fall yeah just shake it across the top get the little legs uh, the crawl is one of my favorite lures you got lots of little legs they don't actually have so much of an inbuilt action you've got to give them that action you just shake them and they'll wriggle across like a little crab and then just drop them down the side and usually they'll just come and suck them in on the drop and i guess again in this sort of territory the importance of, of keeping in contact with the lure is pretty sort of paramount you, you don't want too much slack line because yep. anything that's going to hit you is going to take you that's under it. that rough stuff straight that's away it. yeah keep keeping pretty well contact with the line these situations you give them an inch and that's all over and they'll take a mile that's it Okay, now the other technique you like to use in the racks, and it's one of my favourites sort of anywhere because you don't get snagged up and I hate losing gear, I'm a bit of a girl like that. We've got the 3B crankbait. This is a pop dog yep. in the mongrel colour. Um, you like that? How do you go about fishing that in this sort of territory? Yeah, these are, uh, these are a great little lure that just recently come out. Um, they're a very small little compact thing. Uh, when you're fishing racks, most of the time the fish that are up on top, they're going to be fairly skittish. They're not going to like a massive lure. So these little little things are perfect. You just throw that over the top of the racks, give it a couple of little twitches and pause it. Always make sure you pause it on top of the racks because when a big fish takes it, the best spot you want that fish to be is on top of the racks. If it takes it beside the racks, it's heading down. When they take them on top of the trays, they're coming straight, straight at you. You've got the advantage and you just keep winding. Don't let them get their head down. And I guess the 4,000 reel again plays a the part it, there because yeah. you can wind quickly, yep. get that line back on top of it. That's it. Um, trebles, do you find any, uh, with, with putting the herd on the fish, do you find it any trouble with the trebles there, no. or you generally you just, no, these same technique, the get straight into them? Yeah, no, that's, that's it. Um, these little trebles that come with these are fine, they're strong enough, and um, yeah, they do just fine. In this sort of situation here, the tide's emptying off these racks here, going down in the deeper channels. Deep channels run along these poles here. And uh, what we usually do here is we'll just put our cast as far along the racks as we can and allow that current to just drag it along that edge. There'll be a shadow edge, runs right along there, and that's where the fish will always hold up. So, so there we go. Just gently pull it up. I just noticed there, Russ, there was a little bit of sort of water movement, yeah. bit of activity. Yeah. Drop the lure straight in the middle. I'm guessing obviously that's what you're looking for, any sign of life. That's it. Yeah. Um, ping one in there just to see if it's uh, it's going to take your lure. Yeah, if you uh, try and always use the current like that to your advantage. In these sort of situations, you don't have to get it millimetre perfect on the racks. You can put it out and it doesn't even matter if it lands in the middle of the racks. The current will drag that across and you can just use that to your advantage and just shake it along that edge, keeping it as close as you can and as tight as you can to that structure. And once again, once they take it, then all hell breaks loose and wind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there you go. We've had a little bit of a taste of fishing with Rust. Rust, thanks very much. The, lovely to see that sort of stuff. All things you can try at home. Remember, keep an eye on the Pure Fishing website for the uh, little videos and tips. We're going to do some more of these with some of the guys. So you'll be able to get some of these top techniques from the Berkeley Pro guys. But what more does it say? You watch, we're going fishing. See ya. <laughs>